everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, I'm gonna introduce these six trigonometric functions, talk a little bit about the definitions, what they mean, some basic identities, and even introduce the unit circle a little bit. So this is a video, an introduction to trigonometric functions and to trigonometry. This is really the ground level, the foundation of all the stuff that I think is really important to know moving forward. I'm about to make a bunch of videos. We're gonna dive really deep into trigonometry. So it's really important to have this stuff down, the fundamentals, the basics, and really know this stuff. It's gonna make you have a lot easier and more fun of a time moving forward. So let's go ahead and get into it. Definitions. These are definitions. There's no fancy theorem, proof. I don't even have a mnemonic device for y'all, I'm so sorry. You just gotta memorize them. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's actually probably a necessity to have these memorized moving forward. So sine theta equals y over r, cosine theta, x over r, tangent theta, y over x, and so on. You can read these to yourself. Sine theta, y over r, what do we notice? Cosecant theta, r over y. These are reciprocals of each other, which brings us to reciprocal identities. And the reason this is the only identity I'm going over in this video is because I think this is the most commonly used one, and it's really important to know. Uh, of course, there are Pythagorean identities, uh, co-function, uh, all kinds of different identities, but we're gonna talk about this one because it's pretty easy to see. You can see y over r, r over y. You can nod your head and say, yeah, these are reciprocals of each other. So I will go ahead and write this out. Sine theta equals one over cosecant theta. What else can I say? I can also say that cosine theta equals one over secant theta, right? X over r, r over x. Cosine theta equals one over secant theta. What else can I say? Tangent and cotangent. Tangent theta equals one over cotangent theta. What else can I do? I can rewrite these three more times. I could have cosecant equals one over sine, secant equals one over cosine, that's fine. So I could rewrite this three more times, I'm not going to, but just so you know, it does go both ways. The way I personally remember it is the S goes with the C, the C goes with the S. That's how I memorize it. Whatever works for you, do that. Remember it however you want. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about these six trigonometric functions and what they mean. What is this theta? What is x, y, and r? What does all this stuff mean? Well, theta is just some angle, okay? And that's what these trig functions do is they take some angle and they tell us the ratio between two sides of a triangle with respect to that angle. Maybe that makes no sense and that's okay. I'm about to draw it out right now. So theta is some angle. And what we usually use with these is we refer to the unit circle, okay? 95% of the time when we're dealing with trig stuff, we either draw a triangle, but most of the time we refer to the unit circle, we get a value. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the x and y, x, y plane, right? So this is the y axis, this is the x axis. And what we can do is we can take this theta and we can put it in what we call standard position, which just means that we have the initial side of the angle here on the x-axis, and we have what we call the terminal side of the angle coming up this way somewhere. So it can really be in any quadrant. I'm going to just put it in the first quadrant for convenience, okay? And what we have is this angle is theta. This is our theta, okay? So what I can do is I can just draw a point on this terminal side, draw a dotted line here coming down, and now what I've done is I've formed a right triangle, okay? This is a right triangle. So, what is the sign of this theta? Well, if I know this point, okay, then I have a ordered pair, right? A specific coordinate. So I know my y value, because my y value is the y value with this coordinate pair, I know the y, and that's actually the length of the side of this triangle, of this side here. This length is just the x value, right? This length here, well that's r, that's what we call r. And the reason we call r, the reason we call the hypotenuse r and not h or c or whatever, is because when we get a unit circle, and even with this I could draw a circle around, but this becomes our radius. This is the radius of our circle. If I take this point and I make that a point on some circle. This is a really bad circle, apologizing in advance. But yeah, this is now the radius of this big circle, okay? So that's why we call it R, but I guess you can call it whatever you want, but the definitions use R. Now nah, we use R, call it R, okay? So that's the idea is we have some angle theta, we can put that angle in standard position, and what all these trig functions do is they measure the ratio, okay? the ratio between two sides of the triangle formed by this theta. 
What sides? Well, that depends on the trig function, right? And that's why we have six different functions here. So hopefully this makes a little sense. This is really important to understand moving forward with the unit circle. I never encourage or recommend just staring at the unit circle and memorizing it. Always try to understand it to some level. Honestly, as deep of a level as you can, the more you understand it, the longer you'll remember it because you are gonna keep referring back to this. Calculus one, calculus two, calculus three. I mean, you'll just, you'll keep using it. So hopefully this video helped. Leave a like if it did. Make sure to subscribe for more. Stay tuned, lots of trigonometry coming. Keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you in the next video.